In this video tutorial, I'm just going to quickly show you how you can listen to uh, events in a host element when using a directive. Uh, so we can create directives in Ionic 2 and in Angular uh, to do something uh, with an element. So we can attach it to a specific element and then our directive can do something. Uh, so obviously that's pretty vague, but what you can do with directives is uh, very broad. Uh, but to give you an example, uh, I created a tutorial for uh, creating a parallax uh, header effect uh, in Ionic 2. So uh, that's basically when you when you scroll uh, the content area, you have this sort of header image, and it has this kind of effect that makes it look. Uh, it gives a bit of depth to the application. So uh, the way in which it shrinks uh, gives that uh, effect of creating this sort of perspective. Uh, so I'll link to that uh, tutorial if you want to check that out. Uh, but to do that, I created a custom directive and I attached it to the ion content of uh, the application. And so by doing that, I can perform some functions inside of that directive that are going to affect, affect the content area that it's attached to. So this video isn't really intended to be an introduction to directives in general. Uh, I'll link to another tutorial where I talk about that at a more basic level. Uh, what I want to do in this tutorial is uh, talk about how you can listen to events on that host element. So in the case of my uh, parallax directive, I needed to listen to the scroll event in the content area. And I needed access uh, to that event from my directive, which is attached to ion content. Uh, so I'm going to show you how you can use the host property to listen to events on a host element. So I'm just going to create a custom uh, directive here. Uh, so we're going to do that by running ionic g directive and then we've got to give that a name let's say um, I don't know it's not actually going to do anything so let's just call it nothing uh, that can be our directive so we generate that and then if we jump over into the uh, code here you will see this adds a, a components uh, folder and then we have our nothing directive in here and so you can see it's been created with a um, selector of nothing. So that means if we add nothing to a uh, to some component, then that's going to attach this directive to that. Uh, so just to demonstrate that, uh, if I was to go into the home template now, and I wanted to attach that nothing uh, directive to the content area, I just write nothing, and now this uh, that directive will be attached to that element. Uh, so I'll also just I'll delete that for now. And we're also going to make sure to set this up in the module file. And again, the, how, the point of the module file is something I've covered before. So again, I'll link to that if you're interested in about why we need to add things to this module file. Uh, so I'm just going to import that directive we just created. And I'm going to add it to the declarations. Okay, so that will make the directive available in the application. Um, let's just uh, run this in the browser now to make sure I haven't broken anything uh, yet. Okay, so I've got that running through the browser now and you can see there's no errors and we have our hello nothing directive being logged out, uh, which suggests that that's all uh, working fine. So what we're going to do now is jump back into the code and we are going to, uh, the goal here is to have something in here react to an event that happens let me just open that up again. Uh, that happens on the uh, content area here. So we've attached it to that. We want to listen to an event that ion content creates, and then we want to do something with it here. Uh, so I'm going to create that function. I'm going to literally call it do something. And all we'll do uh, is we'll just log out the event that it is being passed. So the content area emits an event called ion scroll when uh, the content area is scrolled. Uh, so to listen to that in uh, in here directly, we could say ion scroll, and then we could set up uh, a handler for that, uh, say some function, and we could pass in the event data, which is going to describe the the scroll uh, velocity and things like that. Uh, but in this case, that is going to go to a function out in our home.ts file, uh, but that's not where we want to handle that event. We want to handle the event in our directive, and that's not going to send this event there. So instead, what we need to do is add the host property to the directive decorator here. 
and we can supply that with an object which is going to list uh, the events we are listening for and the functions we want to use to handle those. So if I want to listen to the ion scroll event, I can just write ion scroll here and then I just need to specify the function that I want to use to handle that event. So I'll just use the do something function and we also want to pass through that event, uh, the event data that is created when, when the user scrolls. So now when we scroll, we should uh, have this being triggered and the event should be passed in from the, the content area, the, the event that's coming from the content area should get picked up here. Uh, the event data will get sent through to this function and then we can do what, <clears throat> and then we can do whatever we want with that data. So let's check that that works and we're also just going to throw a bunch of content in here just so that we can uh, scroll around a little bit. So I'll just duplicate that a few times. Oh, ah, it doesn't matter. Let's go crazy. Uh, now let's take a look in the browser. Okay, so we've got all our blahs being uh, rendered on the screen there. And so let's try scrolling. And you can see now we're getting uh, spammed with all these uh, objects are being logged out to the browser, uh, which means the directive is getting that event passed to it and it is triggering that do something function, which gives us the, the scroll data. So that's basically uh, how you use the host event to grab uh, an event from the, the host element uh, that your directive is attached to. Uh, you can also do other things like uh, if I were to uh, say I wanted to listen for the resize event, uh, I can listen for an event on the window object in the host. Uh, so uh, if I say window and uh, I think the event is resize, uh, let me try that. So window resize uh, and we'll just call um, We'll just call the same do something event uh, function rather. So I've saved that and we'll give the uh, window a resize and see if anything happens. I might just turn the emulator off to make that a bit easier. Okay, so if I drag this now, you can see that we're getting that event pass through as the window resizes. Uh, so all that function is doing is just logging out. Uh, the event data. So in this case we get the data for the window resize. Uh, so if we open that up uh, we can see all the data for that uh, and then if we scroll we're going to go back to getting those uh, events for um, uh, the scroll data, the scroll event. So this is just a, a really nice clean and simple way to handle events uh, that are coming from a host element that a, a directive is attached to. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.